it just gives you a great way to know how to approach the challenge or what part of the obstacle you're maybe not seeing as a chance for growth or success. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. Today, we have a special guest on the podcast. Her name is Vanessa Samina. Vanessa is someone you might recognize from her tarot readings on YouTube. So we talk about her story, her tarot tips, and the behind the scenes of self-publishing her own tarot decks and running her business. So Vanessa Samina is a published author of multiple tarot decks, a YouTuber and entrepreneur with a passion for tarot, crystals, and yoga. She is also the founder and CEO of Bow Life Switzerland, a lifestyle brand for anyone who loves all things crystals and tarot with a sprinkle of luxury. Hello, Vanessa. Welcome to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. How are you doing today? Hello, Eileen. I'm doing really well. Thank you so much. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. You look so beautiful. Like you and your background is just, it looks like a YouTube video. It's perfect. (laughs) I'm in my usual setup, so I guess it kind of um, kind of helps with the aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks really good. Um, okay, and, and I'm not sure if the audience knows, but we actually met when you came to LA to shoot the YouTube tarot experience. I just thought that was really fun. Like, I'm so happy I got to meet you in person before we got to do this podcast. Um, but yeah, if you guys are listening and you haven't checked out what we did together. I'll link it below. But how did you feel about that experience? I definitely loved the entire experience with YouTube and meeting you out there in LA. It was actually the first time that I was there. And then to meet someone like yourself who has played such an important role in my entire YouTube story and journey and has been such an inspiration. It was definitely a very surreal moment, even just being here right now with you feels very oh, surreal. Thank you. I know I and that's something that surprised me because I I like I've seen your videos. I was like, wow, she's gorgeous. Everything she does is gorgeous. But I, I had no idea that you watched Lavender for so long. And so that was a really nice surprise. Yeah, I've watched Lavender for quite a few years because I remember just being in school and looking up to the things that you had to share in your videos. And I think if there's one thing that I always took from your videos is that it's okay to try again. It's okay to fail, to go through ups and downs and that it doesn't have to be embarrassing. So your channel was definitely like a big support. (laughs) Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. And on that note, I want to hear about your background because you grew up in Zurich, you're mixed race. I feel like you have a very interesting story. So can you give us, you know, who are you? Where did you come from? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I was born actually in Nigeria, in Lagos. And um, so, yeah, I am mixed race. My mom is Nigerian and my dad is Swiss, which is really fun because my mom lives in Switzerland and my dad lives in Nigeria. So they kind of like swapped countries. I was there for a few years, but we always kind of had another home here in Switzerland. And then I came to Switzerland full time when I was seven and did all of my schooling from there on out. And I also lived in London for a few years. And yeah, now I'm back in Switzerland and it's just been an interesting journey. And I'm also kind of ready for a new chapter, maybe in another country, who knows? <laughs> wow. And l- what's your story of how you got into tarot and divination, right? Because are these things, like, how are these things viewed from, you know, your parents or where you grew up? Was it normal? Like, how did you fall into it? Uh, I'd say divination has just always been a natural part of African culture, I'd say. Um, I don't think it's very well known in Swiss culture per se, but it's definitely something that I came up with as a hobby on my own because my parents weren't really into divination to this extent. But growing up in Africa and Switzerland and just having that contrast 
and not always having very many friends or people to hang out with, it definitely made me be in this space where I spent a lot of time by myself. So I collected rocks and crystals. And that's kind of what started off the whole divination journey when I was younger. Yeah. Okay. So did it start with a specific, like, I guess, avenue? Like, was it tarot first or was it just crystals first? Like, I guess, what led you to go deeper down this rabbit hole? And what was your first love? (laughs) Yeah, I'd say my first love was definitely crystals and stones, as I always loved collecting stones. I don't know what it is about human nature, but I feel like we all see shiny stones and we're like drawn to them in a way. Um, And looking into that, I definitely then started to do more research. And then I discovered tarot a few years ago. And first, it was something that I actually was so skeptical about. Um, And I never thought that tarot would be one of the things that I do every single day in my life, because I thought to myself, oh, how is this possible that so many people use these cards in order to gain support or insight or to self-reflect? And it was just curiosity that had me look into it. And then this fascination and feeling like there was really something here that was inexplicable, but yet I could sense that it was helpful. That made me stick around with tarot. And then ultimately, I just felt like I wanted to share it because I've always had a YouTube channel because YouTube has just been something I've always watched. And I'd maybe put like a video up every now and then, but it wasn't consistent. It was just something that I did for fun. And when I finally felt like tarot was a way in which I could share with others and also help others, I started to upload tarot videos and it gained traction. And I saw that it really, people really loved it in the comment section. So I just carried on with it. And here we are today. Yeah. I think that's really interesting how it it just happened because you were posting other types of content before tarot content, right? How do you feel about that? Do you feel like, like, does it make you happy? And is this like, are you happy to be about tarot? Or do you feel like you had to, you know, sometimes you just follow the algorithm and you start posting what other people, like what people want to see. So I'm just curious what that feels like for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely agree with you on that. I think uh, it's important to always keep in mind to stay true to what you're trying to accomplish, not just going with the algorithm. And for me, I've always tried to help other people through videos and through just creating content. And I always had this desire to connect. And I think it was just part of my journey to start off with the generic YouTube or fashion videos and then kind of find like, I have so much more depth as a person. Why do I feel like my internet persona has to just be beauty and fashion? And not that you can't find depth in that. I just, it wasn't so fun for me creating that type of content, but I thought, well, I'm a girl who likes fashion and makeup. So that must be my avenue. I didn't even know that there were other ways in which I could connect with other people. And I think it's just part, it was for me personally, part of growing and also understanding that just because you like some things doesn't mean that that's all that you have to offer. Right. Because you're deeper than that. You have so much more to offer. Before we go on, let's take a break to hear about today's sponsor, Ginger. We all need a little me time to relax and give back to ourselves. I've been using Ginger's rejuvenating self-care kit to pamper myself and ease the tension in my mind and body. The kit includes all the tools you need for a little self-care session, a bottle of ginger essential oil, a mini portable diffuser, a gua sha massage stone, and a limited edition ginger beauty pouch. The ginger oil is an all-natural, high-quality ginger essential oil made from ginger root with so many amazing benefits meant to rejuvenate the mind and 
and body. It's already pre-mixed with high quality carrier oils like jojoba and evening primrose, so it's safe to apply directly to your skin. My go-to pick-me-up when I've been working too long at the computer is to massage it into my tense shoulders. It has a light ginger scent that's not too strong and creates kind of a warming effect when applied to your body. Right now, the Lavender Lifestyle listeners can get 20% off their first purchase at Ginger. Simply visit ginger.us slash T-L-L. That's J-I-N-J-E-R dot U-S slash T-L-L. Again, that's ginger with two J's dot U-S slash T-L-L. This is another thing I'm curious about because with your tarot readings, like you have to have a lot of intuitive skills, even psychic skills, right? Do you feel like you've always had that? Like, did it come easy to you your entire life? I definitely feel like I've always had a sixth sense, so to say, but it's hard to really explain it or display it. And it's not necessarily something that is so openly discussed in society. So I always kind of felt like things would happen. And I felt like I already either knew they were going to take place or like you almost had this deja vu type of feeling like Mm -hmm. it's already transpired. But in reality, it's only happening now. (laughs) I don't know if you're like familiar with feeling that. And it just like intensified and it happened more often. And I just always felt like, I could sense energy really well. Like I was very sensitive to other people's feelings and emotions. So I too am still learning a lot about psychic abilities and also just emotion, vibration, energy. I think there's a lot that we don't know about all of these different things. And yeah, so divination just really helps bring it out and connect us to it and I feel like I've always have a natural I've always had a natural affinity for these things and I've always felt like I had a sixth sense but I definitely think you can also develop a sixth sense. Yeah, I agree too, but to me it sounds like it comes so natural to you. Like it seems like it's effortless <laughs> and, and with this like feeling like things have already happened, like has that happened your entire life? You said like it just grew stronger over time. Can you just go into that? Because I'm so curious about it. Yeah. So it's so funny. I'm just realizing that I guess I'm the only one who feels that way (laughs) because I thought maybe you felt that too, or other people feel that as well, because you only know how you feel, right? Yeah. Um, So just describing my experience for me, it's always been the norm for important things to happen, such as passing like a really pivotal, important exam or failing it or something happening in my private life or with a friendship and feeling like I've already experienced it is just something that I feel started, especially as a teenager, I started to notice it. And first I didn't really think anything about it. And then as I grew older, I just felt like maybe there's something here that I can tap into and that I can maybe just explore more. Um, Yeah, it's hard to describe, but just pivotal (laughs) moments feeling like they've already happened and feeling like you already knew this would take place. So everything is like a deja vu. But but are there there (laughs) things that still surprise you though? Definitely. I mean... I wouldn't say everything's like a deja vu. Um, I just say big pivotal moments are, but then the day-to-day just mundane things in life, those are definitely always new and surprising and fun. But when there's something big coming up, I definitely feel like I can already sense um, what's going to happen. And just when it does happen, it often feels like, okay, this this was meant to be. <laughs> I see. I see. So that's why it's it's almost like you're expecting it to go a certain way based on how it already feels like before it happens. I'd say I I try to remain really open because you can also, if you set your mind to something, then obviously that can also influence the outcome. Um, so I try to just remain really open and be aware of the fact that you could have that confirmation bias if you set your mind True. to something. Um, but yeah, definitely feeling like more times than not, if I intuitively feel like it will go a certain way, 
then usually my intuition is kind of right, whether that's like an event for me or for another person. And just doing that also based off of energy is something that I found to often lead me in the right direction. Yeah, this is definitely a gift you have. I know you said like you don't realize that other people don't have the same thing, but I think this is why you're so special and like in sharing your readings on YouTube and why people are like so drawn to you. Oh, that's um, so kind. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I wanted to get into the readings that you do on YouTube. What is your process? Do you take notes? Do you just pull completely like from intuition in the moment? Like how do you plan ahead for them? It's very difficult for me to kind of describe all of these things because it's just so normal. So I'll try to just do my best to describe the process. But basically I I do The only thing that I plan is what topic I'm going to talk about. And then based off of that, I start by cleansing my space with some sort of um, incense or lavender or something like that. And I just do my setup listening to music that I feel really goes with the topic that I'm going to speak about. So I start setting up my crystals and intuitively going with whichever decks that I feel will be perfect for the readings or whatever I'm speaking of. And during the readings, because I have this routine that gets me into my zone with my incense and cleansing and crystals and music and setting up, and it's a really private thing that I do. I don't check my phone. I just switch everything off, which people are always mad about because they just can't talk to me when I'm filming. (laughs) But um, yeah, so I already get myself in the zone. And then while I'm creating the readings and the predictions, I don't have any notes. I just do everything on the spot. I know you could prepare piles of cards, for example, but I prefer not to do that. I prefer to just take it as it comes in that moment. That's amazing. Wow. And I'm just curious, how many decks do you have? (laughs) do you own? (laughs) So I feel it's, it's different. It's in the hundreds. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Cause you're using multiple decks per reading and then you're, you're saying, Oh, there's a perfect deck for each reading. I'm like, wow. How I wonder what your collection looks like. Have you ever done like a tour of all of your tarot, just all your stuff? I did do a tarot deck collection video That was, I want to say, a year ago or so. So since then, my collection has grown even more. Wow. And that was, it was a very long video. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. Um, Okay, so with, with the way you do your deck, like your readings, you usually like have people pick like a deck or a crystal that they resonate with. I mean, can you explain to the listeners, like, what is the, I guess, what's the reasoning and what's, how does it work, like, in your mind? Because, like, like, do you just believe people will pick what's perfect for them and the reading will resonate with them? Or is it, like, I'm just wondering what's the thinking behind it? The meaning behind giving people multiple decks to choose from is, for one, so that they can make their own choice. And I think that can be really liberating and also ease you into the space because you know you picked something that intuitively felt right for you. And then I personally feel as though coincidences aren't really coincidences. I feel like they're more meaningful than we often give coincidences credit for. And so I feel as though picking a certain pile of cards or a certain deck that has a crystal that you're drawn towards, I feel like that has personal meaning for each individual. And I feel like there's definitely a reason as to why maybe you would feel drawn to a blue crystal and a dark blue deck and someone else may feel drawn to a purple one and a purple deck And I feel like that gives everyone more of a personalized approach to receiving a reading and guidance on a platform where I can't do individual readings. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think that's a really fun aspect too. Um, okay, a quick question about like tarot deck care because are there rules for like mixing decks within a session or like it, like you know what are the like do you believe in any tarot rules or are what's your stance on that? I personally don't believe in any tarot rules. I know one of the most common rules is that you should be gifted your first tarot deck. And I don't think anything should stop you from purchasing a tarot or an oracle deck. I don't think you have to wait for someone to gift you a deck or anything like that. Um, I also don't believe in any specific rules when it comes to handling the cards. I mean, I just like to shuffle them in a way how they remain in really immaculate condition but other people like a more used look and feel, and that's okay because I feel like a big part of divination at the end of the day is self-reflection, introspection, and using it in a way that suits you. So putting up kind of gatekeepers or rules and reasons to not be able to do it this way and only be able to do it that way, I just feel like it's kind of taking away from the meaning or from the ability for this to help more people. Yeah. And what about like cleansing a tarot deck? Is there something you're supposed to do? Like, do you have something that you regularly do with your decks? I definitely recommend to cleanse the decks, rid them of any unwanted energies. I think that's a really great practice to incorporate, especially if you're using the decks with other people who are also coming in contact with the decks, or if you just purchase a deck, I think a great way to cleanse your deck is to lay it out, for example, in the sunlight or the moonlight, but just make sure that the cards don't fly away. So <laughs> maybe like putting them in a container, you can also chant or use singing bowls. You can use crystals and incense and that's just a great way to make sure that your cards are just completely clean of any type of disturbances. Awesome. And I'm curious, what kind of readings do you do for yourself? Like, do you have a daily or weekly ritual with, with your self-care and with your tarot? I love to use these divination boards that I created. So I, it's like a 10 card spread and I love to just use some new decks that I'm not quite familiar with yet, just in order to see what comes through because some of the decks that I use every single day in readings, I just kind of feel like I, I need space from them sometimes. So <laughs> I like to use decks that uh, I don't use very often or that are brand new and just kind of go with that 10 card spread and ask whatever question or whatever weighs heavily on my mind or on my shoulders. And sometimes depending on how much I've done that day already with cards, uh, I'll just delay it to another day if I feel like it's been too much. But on average, I definitely say I do my own readings a few times a week. Wow. And if I have like a big question about what to do next in my personal life or with my business, I love to consult tarot and oracle cards because even if it doesn't tell you to do something super specific, it just gives you a great way to know how to approach the challenge or what part of the obstacle you're maybe not seeing as a chance for growth or success. Yeah. And beyond like doing the 10 card layout, do you journal after? Like, do you do anything in addition after you do your reading? Like, how do you follow through on kind of the advice that you're getting? I love to lay out the cards uh, either just on a table or on the floor or on my uh, divination board. And then I actually, that's such a good question because I always keep my journal next to it because I like to keep track of everything that's happening, of everything that I'm realizing, of all of the messages that I'm getting. And depending on how I feel about the spreads, I like to write them down. And that actually reminds me of the first time I ever did a tarot spread. It was a little three card spread and it 
was life-changing. And I'm so happy Mm. that I wrote that down in one of my journals. Oh my gosh. I mean, can you share? uh, That was another question I was going to ask. Like, have you had like a very surprising or impactful reading for yourself? Like the most impactful or surprising reading? I'd say the most impactful one was definitely the first. Uh, I was so enamored by tarot and it was, I was still really skeptical. So for that little three card reading that I, I was still using the guidebooks and everything to figure out what the cards meant. And to my question was whether tarot would have an impact on my life or what impact that tarot would have on my life. And in this three card spread, we had the world with two other cards and that's a card of like fulfillment and bliss and having some sort of culmination and satisfaction in your life. And that being the answer to whether tarot would do good for me. I mean, it's an understatement and it came true. (laughs) So I love that. It's been really impactful. Yeah. Okay, my loves, let's take a break for today's sponsor of the podcast, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit, where you get pre-portioned, high-quality ingredients delivered right to your doorstep. Because all the ingredients are pre-measured for you, there's less prep work and less waste when cooking with HelloFresh. Their easy, step-by-step recipes makes it both fun and stress-free to cook. HelloFresh helps you cut back on meal prep time as well. Their meals are ready in around 30 minutes. In terms of meals, you can choose from over 55 weekly recipe options, including low calorie, vegetarian, and family friendly recipes. I love the variety of recipes I'm learning to cook each week. I even save the recipe cards for all my favorite recipes. Of course, flexibility is really important, so you can skip weeks when you need to, change your delivery dates, or update your food preferences all in the HelloFresh app. If you're looking to try out HelloFresh, you can go to hellofresh.com slash TLL16 and use the code TLL16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Again, that's hellofresh.com slash TLL16 and use the code TLL16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. What would you recommend to people if they are beginners and they want to learn how to read the cards like on a deeper level, kind of like on the level that you have, like instead of just, you know, most people start out reading the guidebooks and Googling, which is what I've been doing for the longest time. So how do you, like, what do you, you know, what advice do you have for people to understand tarot on a deeper level? Mm, Yeah, I would recommend to work with the cards every day if possible, even if it's just a little bit. And also to just go with your intuition to not always think too much about what the suits mean and what the numbers symbolize. And, you know, with tarot, there is this part where there is some meaning that's already kind of given to a lot of the cards. And then there's also the intuitive side. And I think that's where we can really have fun and connect with cards on a deeper level. And when we get a little bit caught up in trying to learn the meanings of all of the cards, I think that can sometimes get lost, just having fun and maybe also connecting with other people. I feel like that can help you remember a lot of the cards and learn as you use them with another person. And then when you think back, you think to yourself, oh, when I was laying cards with a friend, with Eileen, I had the lover's card and that's what it meant. And we had a great time and we laughed about it. We cried about it. And yeah, Mm -hmm. so definitely just like the social aspect and just having fun with it. Yeah. Is that what you did with a lot of your friends or the people in your life? (laughs) Like, did you do a lot of readings? You know, it's actually so funny because that's a part that I never really experienced with tarot, which is why I recommend that anyone who can, who has friends and family who are very open to this, that they take advantage of it and that they have fun with it. I definitely always had my husband who was into it and very open to it and supportive, but I definitely feel like it would have been great starting out to have more people around me who were interested in this rather than it just be more of a um, isolated experience. 
Yeah, I understand. And it's not everyone is open to tarot either. And it's, yeah, (laughs) if you're, you know, open enough, if the people around you are open enough, then that could be a beautiful opportunity. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of want to pivot and ask you about your entrepreneurial journey, because I feel like that's really interesting too. Um, So before we talk about your shop, like, did you have past business ventures? Because you do say that you're a serial entrepreneur. I did have past business ventures. I actually, my very first business venture was a cleaning company when I think I was 18 or so or 19. (laughs) It's been so long. Yeah. So I have had other business ventures. I had a e-commerce pet store beforehand. So I just did lots of things that I was passionate about. And it was never about the money. It was just always fun for me to have a business, to start a business, to see what works and what doesn't, especially as I was still studying. So it was just a fun outlet to learn. And then at some point I ventured into, you know, a business venture that I felt was really something that resonated and that was more than just fun. Yeah. Yeah. And at what point did you start your current shop? Like, was it when your YouTube tarot videos were already taking off or was like, did you already have a shop before that? Like, what's the timeline of all of this? Bow Life was started before YouTube tarot was doing very much. (laughs) And I think one of the first products was pillows because okay. <laughs> it was supposed to be like homeware at the beginning. And then it kind of naturally grew into more crystal products and jewelry and all of these things, tarot decks, as my own interest also focused more on divination. Mm, okay. So the products kind of evolved with your interests over time. Exactly. <laughs> Love that. Um, okay. Yeah. So let's talk about crystals first, since you said that rocks and crystals are your first love. (laughs) I mean, how I've seen your crystals and your jewelry. How do you create everything? You have like a lot of stuff like crystal water bottles, crystal water sticks. Um, it's very interesting. Yeah. What's the story behind that and how you create all of it? I'd say a lot of it just happens intuitively, I'll just see a material or something that I feel really inspired by. And then that will kind of start me looking for ways in which I can incorporate that into my business. And when it comes to crystals, I also just pick crystals based on the types that I've always loved. And a lot of it is also footwork, trying to make sure that they're sourced in an ethical way that they come from a place where I'm sure that the quality is really great. So I'd say a lot of it just comes from what I really love and a lot of research. Yeah. I mean, is it difficult to source crystals? Because it seems difficult. (laughs) Like they come from all over the world. How do you make sure they're good? How does Mm -hmm. that work? I'd say it is difficult and you have to definitely stay on your toes when it comes to that to make sure that you don't compromise your morals and your values and the things that are important to you. And also to just keep kind of, uh, how should I say, just keep asking around, trying to speak to different people who are in those places, right? Get on the phone, talk to people, ask them how it's sourced, where it's coming from. And just like with any other business, just really doing your research, like loving your product is one thing, but then you also want to make sure that you deliver it in a way that everyone who is a client of yours is able to enjoy why you love that product in the first place. Yeah. And do do you do all of that part yourself? And do you find yourself good at that part of the business? I do do most of the things when it comes to aesthetic and also sourcing products and making the final decision of what makes it into the business. 
that is definitely all me. I do consult with my husband as well as he works with me on a lot of these things because as you know, YouTube is, there's a lot that goes into it. So it can, it can be a lot to juggle both, but I'd say, yeah, I'm definitely really involved in it, but I also wanted to make sure that this was a way how I could collaborate with other people who are passionate about these things too. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It, it's a lot of work going in. Like YouTube is a job in itself. Running a business <laughs> online is a job in itself. There's so much that goes into it. So I was just wondering, like, I was like, how does she do all of this? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, when you really enjoy what you do, it doesn't feel as much like work. Um, yeah. I have to say I do have the unhealthy tendency of working every single day of the year. <laughs> um, but when you love what you do, yeah. I feel like it's just it's hard to get away sometimes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so now I do want to talk about your tarot decks. You have two out right now. Um, what is the process of creating a tarot deck, right? Um, I guess I also want to know what's the difference in how you like s- distinguish what's different between like two decks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For me, the process has been it. I just kind of let it come to me in a way. So if I have been in contact with an artist that I really love and they are open to creating a deck. Then I like to use people's art as inspiration as well. I don't feel like the inspiration has to always come from me. I like to get inspired by whoever it is that I'm working with. So I like that to be in a sense, um, like a partnership where I don't create the guidebook to the decks separate from the artist because it is one right the artist brings their mm-hmm. heart and soul into it 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 is what makes the deck what it is so I love to be inspired by the artists that I end up working with but sometimes I also start with an idea that just hits me or I'm going through a phase or season in my life where I find something really important and I can base a whole I can see myself basing a whole deck off of it. So that's when I first create the concept and then I look for an artist that would fit that concept. So I have these two ways of creating decks. Um, Does one of them refer to your first deck and one of them refer to your second deck? Yes. (laughs) So which one's which? (laughs) I'd say the Gentle Heart Tarot. I first had an idea and... The reason why it's called the Gentle Heart Tarot is because I made it for everyone who feels like having a gentle and soft heart can sometimes be almost like a bad thing, right? Because you can feel as though you get walked all over all the time and you get taken advantage of, and it can feel like a weakness to have a gentle heart. And it was actually meant to empower everyone who ever feels like their empathy is a weakness. So That was the thought behind that. And then I found an amazing artist to go with that. And I still work with her today. She's an important part of Bow Life. And then with my second deck, which is the Pastel Journey Tarot, I've always been a fan of the creator and I I mean the artist of the deck. And so I got in touch with her and her creations are what inspired the Pastel Journey Tarot. Oh, I see. Okay. And in having two different decks, like I'm curious, are readings different based on the illustrations? Like, cause you, you know, the cards themselves are the same, but the visuals are different. So does it change the readings or the meanings at all? Mm. I think it also depends a little bit what kind of mindset you go into the readings with, because I am aware that on one hand, No matter how the tower is depicted, for example, which is a major arcana card, it always has, quote unquote, the same meaning. But I really love to use different decks and readings because I like to have the meaning of the card be adjacent to what deck that I'm using. So if it's depicted in one way in a deck, I like to make that a part of the reading because, as I said earlier... For me, it's not a coincidence that that deck is in this reading 
So I want to use the imagery from that deck as an important part of the reading. Wow. No, that makes so much sense because I know there's like an intuitive part based on like literally what you see visually and what it reminds you of. Um, Okay. So when you're saying you're doing your readings for yourself, 10 card layout, you're using multiple decks? Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't because I spend so much time with the cards when I'm creating YouTube readings and videos. I like to keep it very simple for myself. So I want to say probably most of the time I will focus on using one deck uh, rather than multiple ones because I'm already just engaged with so many different ones throughout the day. Yeah, I see. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, let's talk about your new deck coming out. So is, yeah, what's coming next for you? What's next is actually an Oracle deck. And the tarot decks that I've created have been so well received by my community, which I'm really, really happy and pleased with because self-publishing a tarot deck is, it's a lot because it's, you've got the book aspect of the guidebook, but then you've got 78 cards and a box. It's a lot of moving parts. Um, And a lot of people can feel a little bit intimidated by tarot because there are so many cards. So that's why what's next is an Oracle deck, because I really felt like that's something that people could maybe use more easily without needing to know the meanings of tarot cards. And how many cards are in the Oracle deck? For this one, it's called the Wild Muse Oracle deck, and it contains 54 different cards. What was your inspiration for the Wild Muse? For me, my inspiration was the time that we're going through right now with body image and aesthetics, but kind of putting a little bit of a twist on it where it is, you have so much more meaning than maybe just looking aesthetically pleasing. So giving something that is rather seen as shallow, giving a muse, which is more, I'd say it's more seen as like just a visual place of inspiration, but giving a muse so much more depth and meaning than what they look like. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, I mean, for the people listening who probably don't know the difference between tarot and oracle deck, can you quickly explain that? Yes, of course. Tarot decks contain... 78 different cards usually. And of those 78 different cards, there is a major arcana, which contains 22 different cards. And then there is a minor arcana, which has four different suits. So the suit of wands, cups, swords, and also pentacles. And each one of those suits has 14 cards each. And there is kind of a meaning and quote unquote, I wouldn't say rules, but there is meaning to each one of those cards uh, that remains the same throughout tarot. Whereas with Oracle decks, that's really up to the creator. They can range from, I've seen as little as 36 cards in a deck up to, I've seen Oracle decks with 200 different cards. And yeah, the creators just give those Oracle decks whatever meaning they would like, whatever depictions. And that's just more up to the creator, how they'd like to interpret it. So with your new Oracle deck, how did you decide like what the cards were going to be since it's so open? There's no rules, right? Um, Like, do they go through like a journey or is it just like, like themes that you like? Mm, I'd say for me, It was like, it is documenting my experience and what I'm going through. So I usually create the decks whenever I feel like I have some sort of emotion (laughs) that I need to Mm. uh, just process and figure out how to handle and deal with. So for the Wild Muse Oracle deck, I just basically took different photos that inspired an emotion and put those together almost like a a little mood board and then I wrote how I felt about it and then kind of created each individual card based on that 
Wow. I think that's beautiful. Like you are an artist and that the deck is your work of art. It's like your emotions in something physical that people can use for themselves. It definitely is. Yeah. I definitely like to put whatever it is that I'm going through into the work because I feel like as an artist and I'm sure you maybe go through this too, whenever you really put emotion into it and whether that's sadness, happiness, anger, it just does so much more than when you're creating something without feeling connected to mm-hmm. some sort of emotion. Yeah. Love that about you. You seem very like led by the heart kind of person. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So I guess what are... I mean, I have some other questions here related to tarot. So we're going to go back. To, I guess we can talk about both tarot and oracle cards. Like, are there any do's and don'ts when receiving like a tarot reading or oracle reading? I'd say if you're receiving the reading, I think the best thing to do is to just be open-minded and also to try to not just ask yes or no questions to bear in mind that this is a tool for guidance, not necessarily to just give you a yes or no answer. And also, I think a big thing with tarot and divination right now is, of course, to make sure that it's a credible source, of course, that this is someone who you trust, that this is someone who takes it seriously. Um, And definitely as someone who conducts readings, I'd say to take your time with it to try to not feel overwhelmed when creating these tarot readings and to just bear in mind that it's very different when you're doing it with someone right there and that practice is really what not makes perfect but just allows you to get used to being with other people because when you're just doing readings at home or for yourself it's very different than when you're doing it for a friend or you're even doing it as a job for clients. But I think the most important thing when doing readings is just your intention. And yeah, that's also why I love YouTube so much and why I have a business because tarot for me is something that I want to do for fun. People tune into my readings because they like to, and I like that I am not necessarily like selling readings, right? (laughs) So it just, my core values are that I want to help people. And it's great to just be able to put it on a platform with that as the core value, but that's not to take away from anyone who does it for a living, of course. Right. Right. And when you're doing your readings, like, do you read like reverse cards as well? Because sometimes those like take on like a more negative connotation, but I feel like I've only seen you do like positive, you know, every card has both a positive and like a challenge or, or something like that. So, so how, what is your view on when you're doing readings? Do you focus on just the learning and the positive or do you, you know, how do you take reverse cards or the negatives? Hmm. Sometimes I do incorporate reverse cards and sometimes I don't just because I don't like how they look reverse (laughs) with some of the Mm -hmm. decks. So I'm also a very visual person. When I lay the cards, I like it to be... They always look really nicely. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And that's, again, where I feel like there are no rules. For some Mm -hmm. people, they like it to look very clean. And for other people, they prefer if it's a little bit more wild. So I think it really depends on who you are as a person and bringing that into the reading I think is a really great way to make it your own. And yeah, when it comes to difficult cards and challenges, I think it's important to always be honest when a challenging card is encountered. But of course, to also show people that, hey, there's a way how we can turn this challenging thing into either a learning lesson or into a positive. Awesome. Um, okay. So now I want to know about 
your schedule? Like what you're kind of like your, what's a typical week? Because you mentioned like you're working every day and you have a lot of different projects going on. So what does that actually look like? Routines are really important to me. And that's because life is very chaotic. So I tend to cling on to the routines that really help me set myself up for success. For me, a typical week doesn't really feel like a week because like you said, I work every day. So there is no, for example, weekend. Um, So I definitely like to lay out my schedule a few weeks in advance to figure out what the, the big projects are and then breaking them up into smaller little bits and trying to not be productive, but effective. And like you said, I am definitely someone who goes with my heart a lot. So if I schedule, for example, writing more on my next deck on a day and it just doesn't feel right, then I'll just kind of switch it with whatever does. So Mm -hmm. remaining flexible is still really important to me. But on a daily basis, what really happens every single day is waking up early, working out doing a yoga practice, meditation has to happen every single day. And also just some sort of healthy meal. I feel like that's the best way for me to really feel good about myself while not burning out. Yeah. I love that because there is so much, even you giving that little bit of detail, like it tells me there's so much that goes in like behind the scenes that contributes to your success or your appearance and and, and how you live your life. I think that's really interesting. Do you have any other, I guess, like I want to know like any tips or habits that you, you know, encourage the listeners to start doing or start trying out like success habits, lifestyle tips, things like that. Mm -hmm. I would definitely say, What has helped so much is reading and just reading whatever feels good. I think that's a really big one because I used to try to read books that were nonfiction because I felt like, well, if I read fiction, then I'm kind of wasting time. Or if I'm working out and I'm not sweating, then it's not a real workout. And that's where I, for example, started uh, a yoga practice and went into yoga teacher training to remind myself, like, it's about feeling, it's about enjoying, it's about relaxing. And the same with reading books, whether they're fiction or nonfiction, it's about just taking a moment for yourself and not always feeling like you have to be super effective or doing the most every second of the day, especially if you already have a really busy schedule and lifestyle, whether you're going to a job or whether you're studying, uh, just to remember that your routine is here to help you, to suit you, not for you to display a certain type of, um, how should I say, display like certain traits that we see on the internet. Like nobody works out every day full force at a hundred percent. Some days you'll only show up at maybe 10% and that's okay. But to remember that then to adjust your routine in a way that suits that 10% that you can bring that day and feel soothing and feels good. Yeah. Love that. Thank you for sharing. Um, What are your longer term goals? Like, Where do you see yourself taking your career, your channel, your business, I don't know, in the next five years or so, or even beyond that? I definitely have some amazing ideas and places I want to go. But with what a wild ride this has been and never expecting tarot to play such an integral role in my life, I have some goals, but I'm not like really set on them. But a big goal is definitely to continue to publish my own decks and help other people publish their work as well. And just knowing that it's a niche that has so much potential being a woman of color in a space as publishing and being able to self-publish 
my own decks is already so empowering. And I just want to take up more space in areas where people who look like me or come from a background that I come from have not been seen or heard. And of course, continue on with YouTube because I just love the connection that I have with my unicorn family on YouTube. That just brings me so much joy. And yeah, maybe exploring different parts of myself and my life that I feel really connected to, whether it be music or yoga and continuing to just live my best life, really. (laughs) I feel like the way you're living life already, like you're just going to flow with it. Opportunities will come (laughs) and you'll just take them. Like you're, you're here for the ride and you're not stressing out. You're just like enjoying it. Exactly. That's yeah. like what I want to continue trying to that. do and just continue to connect with amazing people like yourself and see it as inspiration when I can connect with other creatives and allow that to push me forward too. Yeah. Yeah. I believe if you just like lead with your heart, like stick, like, you know, stay aligned with your joy, the opportunities will come. Like you don't have to force them. Right. I, I think I used to all, be all about like, oh, I have to set goals and do this, this, this. And instead now it's more like leaning into the feeling of what I want and just like things will come. Opportunities will come. It's it's not something you can control. It's just trust <laughs> that it, it will happen. I agree. I 100% agree with just leaning into what feels right and mm-hmm. where your heart really leads you next. Love it. All right, Vanessa, where can we find you online? You can find me on YouTube if you type in Vanessa Semina. And you can also find me on bowlife.com, which is where you can find all my tarot decks, everything crystal related. And of course, also on Instagram at Vanessa Semina. Amazing. And everyone definitely check her out. I'll link everything in the show notes so you can watch her YouTube channel or just check her out after this. Thank you so much, Vanessa. You are such a star. Like I I think you're amazing. You have such a gift and I'm excited to watch you grow. Oh, thank you so much, Eileen. I really appreciate you and everything that you've done for me, even when you didn't know that I was out there in the crowd. I've been watching you for years and you've been such an inspiration and I can't wait to see what you do next because I'm sure so many others feel just as inspired as I do about everything that you've accomplished. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. Like it's such a good (laughs) reminder for me because I've been doing YouTube for so long. I can forget like that I'm impacting real people (laughs) or like, you you know, sometimes you have your phases of like feeling really good and feeling like tired, Mm -hmm. but hearing that from you is, is just so nice. So thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for connecting with me and taking the time to sit down together and have this conversation. Yeah. I love it.